Hi, this is Mr. Test Tube Head, and we're going to look at the operation of the Bunsen burner and the valve system on the desk. The valve system is known as the ball cock, pet cock, or bib cock valve. And you just, you know, stop snickering. You are so immature. Let's look at the operation of the ball cock valve, as I prefer to call it. It is strictly an on off valve and does not allow you to regulate the flow, despite decades of watching students try to do so. This valve, when it is 90 degrees to the spigot, is off. When it's lined up with the spigot, it's on. Another name for the spigot is the gas nipple, and just, just stop. Okay, if I take the handle off, can you see the pathway on the left versus the right? Which one is on, which one is off? There's very little fine control over this at all. Look at this animation. The gas won't flow to the last few degrees, so you do not attempt to control the size of the Bunsen burner flame with these taps. They're on or they're off. Next, we'll look at the Bunsen burner itself. The Bunsen burner is a very simple device. You only have an air inlet and gas regulator to adjust. The double cap allows some cooling at the top to try to keep the entire body at a safe temperature. We want to look at the gas regulator valve at the base, which is completely misunderstood by most people using a burner. It is a needle valve configuration on a tapered thread. You only have to extract 5 millimeters of that needle and the gas is on as full as it can go. That is only about 5 threads at the bottom. Just above that is an o-ring preventing gas from escaping out the bottom of the burner. So you cannot extract more than 5 millimeters. Because of the tapered thread design, the more you undo the regulator screw, the looser the fit will become. By the time you reach near the end of the o-ring itself, the screw will become very wobbly. You should not see the o-ring or the black sealant at the bottom, no more than five threads. If you keep unscrewing it, the screw will get loose, a gas leak will start at the bottom, and you may get ignition at the bottom of the table. If you look at the difference in size from the gas outlet, which is a pin-sized hole, to the screw outlet at the bottom, the ignition will be many times bigger than the flame out the top. If I remove the chimney off the Bunsen burner, we expose the small little gas jet here. And this is the entrance for all the gas that goes into the chimney. It's a very small opening. This opening is no bigger than a household pin. That is all the gas flow that goes into the burner. However, the hose going into the burner is significantly larger. So we have much more gas possible to go down this unit than you see. And this is where you can get into trouble. So I turn the unit on the side, you can see the structure of the gas valve here. This screw down below, when you extract it, allows more gas to flow out the top. However, the way the screw is blocking this opening is through a very simple mechanism of this pin. And this pin is only five millimeters from its narrowest to its widest. So when the valve is all the way in, the tip of this pin is blocking that opening. And there's a tapered hole behind here. So once this cone is withdrawn, which is only that far, the burner will be on completely and it will not get any bigger flame by you continually to retract this. It's wrong for two reasons. You're not supposed to have a large flame, four fingers at most. So there's absolutely no reason for you to even extract this to the tip. We never need the burner turned on that high. So you're only going to be extracting the screw, just the thickness of my fingernail. Then you can tell the shiny threads here is where the screw has run back and forth. The black gunk is sealant. This, when it goes in here, is a loose fit. See that? It's a tapered shaft screw. So 
even after a couple of turns, you can still pull it loose. It's hard to see by eye, but look, I'm turning it and I can still pull it loose. It takes several turns before those threads engage because they're tapered. Now it's in. But even though it's in, you can see this wobble. By the time it's turned out that far and this wobble appears, gas can come out the bottom. And if you turn it out all the way, it falls out. You cannot see that taper really to the naked eye. But if we look at the bottom here, you can see that the bottom has a vastly larger opening for gas flow than the top. And there's the gas flow opening there. So if the screw falls out the bottom, the amount of gas coming out is going to grow by like a factor of 20 and the whole table will ignite. And yet students are constantly unscrewing these to the limit of the screw. You see this thick black band of sealant here. You shouldn't be seeing that. If that comes out, I guarantee you this thing will be leaking and you can see how much travel these threads have. Okay, that is the number one mistake people make with the burner and it's inexcusable. Look at that, I'm halfway in and it's still got a wobble. Keep turning it in. Now the wobble's disappeared. That black sealant, that big collar should not appear. You only have to extract the thread five millimeters tops. That's five threads. Anything more than that, and the burner's going to ignite from the bottom. And in fact, in most of our use, you will not have this thread extracted more than about there. Okay? Don't be doing that. And the first thing you should check when you see a burner at the table is two things. Step one, make sure that thread is almost completely in. And then the second step, that this chimney has been screwed on almost completely in. Very little air is needed. The minute you can see air, light through this, you've actually opened it up more than you need. So you see there, I can see the opening start to appear right in there. It's already too far. See the daylight? No. You don't want to even see that. You should see that. Yet, what we frequently see is the reverse. This thing unscrewed all the way and this one opened all the way. No. This one is closed. This one is closed almost completely all the time. Not the other way around.